Hello friends, today we shall discuss design philosophy for bonded receipt payments. Concrete payments in general are designed based on Westergaard theory and this theory assumes that the concrete slab is free to move under the load. So whenever there is a load, there will be bending or deflection in the slab and this deflection of the top slab is independent independent of the lower layer. Now this independent of movement or deflection in the slab is achieved by in inserting a bonding la debonding layer like polythene or some wax compound between the base layer of DLC and the concrete slab. But in case of bonded digit payment, no such debonding is done. We do not provide any microfilm or wax compound between the DLC layer and the concrete layer. And therefore, these two layers are monolithic. And therefore, Vaishaka analysis is not applicable as such in case of bonded jet payment. The design philosophy of a bonded jet payment is like this. It is basically a three step process. The first step is that you design the concrete slab as per IRC 58, assuming that the slab is laid over a layer of GSB. DLC is not considered here. And the layer of GSB can be 200 millimeter to 250 millimeter. Let that thickness of the slab for the given soil conditions and given traffic conditions be H. Now this H is replaced by two layers. Layer 1 will be of DLC, let us say the layer of DLC is H2 and another and the upper layer will be of PQC, let us say that one is H1. So you have a concrete slab which is designed over the sub base and this thickness is H which is total PQC thickness over GSB layer of 200 to 250 millimeter thickness. Now this is replaced by two layers now. You have a slab of PQC of let us say thickness H1 and below that you have a layer of DLC. This is PQC of thickness H2. Now this combined fragile strength of the PQC and DLC should be equal to or greater than the fragile st stiffness of the slab of thickness H. That is the design philosophy. So that is a three step process. The first, in the first step you design the payment as per IRC 58, assuming that the concrete slab is laid on a layer of GSP. Then divide this thickness into two parts H1 and H2. H2 is of DLC and PQ, H1 is PQC. So that their fragile stiffness, some of the fragile stiffness of PQC and DLC is equal to fragile stiffness of the original slab. Now when you are considering this PQC, it has let us say modulus of elasticity E1, the Poisson ratio mu1 and thickness is H1 and it has a modulus of elasticity E2 and Poisson ratio mu2. Now the fluctual rigidity or fluctual stiffness Fs is given by this equation E into I upon 1 minus mu square. And if you consider thickness of the slab H, so in the first case this fluctual stiffness will be E into B H cube upon 12 into 1 minus mu square. B is the width of the slab, H is the thickness. Assume that the width is taken as 1, unity. If it is 1, then this flexural stiffness or flexural strength of the concrete slab of thickness H will be E H cube upon 12 into 1 minus mu square. So you have now this slab converted into two layers, one is of PQC that is your let us say E1 
and mu1 and this is e2 and mu2. Now when you have two layers of different moduli, then the effective width of this will reduce in the ratio of their modular ratio e2 upon e1 and therefore this will be now equivalent to a slab of thickness h1 and below that you have a slab of thickness h2. If this is 1 then this is e2 by e1 by mechanics. And let us assume that the centroid of this first slab is here at mid height, centroid of the second layer is at mid height and the neutral axis is now moved downward, let us say x, x is the neutral axis. So this distance is let us say d, depth of neutral axis from the top. Find out what is t. What is d? So find out to find out this is small d, you need simply that this d into total area a1 plus a2 should be equal to area 1 into y1 plus area 2 into y2. Area 1 is the area of this slab, area 2 area of this slab, y1 is the distance of centroid from the top surface and y2 is the distance of this centroid from the top surface. So d now is a1, a1 is h1 into 1, 1 is the width into h1 that is the area multiplied by h by 2, this is h by 2, h1 by 2 plus area of 2, now width is now e2 upon e1 multiplied by h2 into this total distance from the top surface that is h1 plus half of h2, h1 plus half of h2 that is divided by total area, total area is h1 into 1 plus e2 upon e1 into h2. This is the value of t, depth of neutral axis from the top surface. Now once you know D, you can find out what is the fragile strength of two layers and fragile strength or fragile stiffness can be considered, can be calculated by taking moment of inertia. So moment of inertia of the first section which you can say I1 that is your PQC about this axis X, X1, XX about this axis will be moment of inertia of the slab that is your B1 again 1, B1 is 1 into H1 cube upon 12 plus area of this B1 into H1 multiplied by square of this distance, this is small distance up from the centroid that is d minus h1 by 2. This is i1 and because b1 we have assumed 1, so we remove it from here. So it is h1 cube upon 12 plus h1 into d minus h1 by 2 square. And similarly i2, i2 for the second layer will be B, B is now E2 by E1, E2 by E1 into H2 cube by 12 plus this area again E2 by E1 into H2 multiplied by this distance, distance between the centroid and the neutral axis. Now this distance is, this distance is total distance that is h1 plus half of h2 minus d. So that is h1 plus half of h2 minus d 
all is square. Now, this is the moment of inertia of the upper layer and of the layer layer, lower layer. Now, once you know the moment of inertia, you can find out what is the flexural strength or flexural stiffness of the concrete slab FS1 that is E1 multiplied by I1 by 1 minus mu square. And similarly, for the second part, lower layer, the flexural stiffness is E2 into I2 upon 1 minus now the mu 1, this is mu 2 square. Now, this total sum of these values, sum of these values should be greater than or equal to Fs that you calculated E h cube upon 12 into 1 minus mu square. Mu is the concrete Poisson ratio. H original slab thickness which you designed H per IC 58 assuming a base layer of 250 or 200 millimeter only GSP. Let us join philosophy. Let us take one example. Suppose you design a rigid pavement using the method given in IRC 58 for soil conditions and above that soil subgrade you provide a layer of GSB let us say 200 millimeter find out value of K from the table and for the actual axial load spectrum which is observed in field you design the concrete slab using the complete procedure given in IRC 58. Let us say that the thickness of the slab is 29 centimeter h which you design above GSB of 200 millimeter the thickness is achieved as 29 centimeter. Now this thickness of 29 centimeter is broken into two parts one is of concrete slab PQC let us say H1 you assume 23 centimeter and H2 is 15 centimeter. So this 29 centimeter is replaced by two layers. One layer is the concrete slab of 23 centimeter and below that you have monolithic layer of 15 centimeter DLC. No debonding is provided. Now in this equation you can calculate what is the value of D. You know H1, H1 is now 23 centimeter. So, E1 value as per IRC 58 for PQC and for DLC, you can take 30,000 MPa and for this it is 13,600 MPa. Mu value will change with E value, lower the value of E, higher will the value of mu. So, mu value will be let us say 0 0.15 for PQC and 0 0.20 for DLC. Now, put these values in this equation. H1 is now 23 centimeter. E2, E2 is 13,600. E1 is 30,000. And H2 is 15 centimeter. You calculate what is the value of D. Now, this D value will be 158. 0.33 millimeter. 15.8. It is now you see the centroid is as as 11.5 centimeter. Neutral axis is now at 13. Point, sorry, 15.83 centimeter. It has gone down because of this monolithic layer of DLC. Once you know D, you can calculate I1. Putting all these values, H1 you know, now D is also known and therefore this I1 will be calculated from this equation and similarly I2 will be calculated from this equation. Put these values here, Fs1, Fs1 is E1 into I1 upon 1 minus mu1 square and this value is now 44.17 MPa. And similarly, FS2, FS2 is 
सिक्स टू एम पी ए नाउ वट इज दस वैल्यू फॉर दी कॉन्क्रीट स्लैब ऑफ ट्वेंटी नाइन सेंटीमीटर प्लेस्ड अब जीएसबी एफ एस वैल्यू फॉर दिस कॉन्क्रीट स्लैब इज ई एच क्यूब अपॉन ट्वेल्व इंटू वन माइनस म्यू स्क्वायर E is thirty thousand into point two nine cube divided by twelve into one minus point one five square, and this value is sixty two point three eight MPa. This sum, sum of these two values, should be equal to or larger than this value, and that is how your design becomes safe. If it is not, if this value, this sum of these value is less than this value, increase the thickness of H one by one centimeter, and then redo all these calculations. So till your design becomes safe. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any question, you can write.